Okay, so we're going to move on to our next story. Speaking of being cold-hearted, we are going to talk about son of a bitch. There's really no other way to describe this guy. We're going to go back in time. Not literally, but that would be awesome. To 1927, there was a man named Andrew Kehoe, and he was just a despicable, despicable human. Now, people said that he was like eager to do favors and to kind of help out. This is in Michigan, I should say. They figured, you know, people, he said he was, you know, a good guy, but he was like, really, get really angry really quickly. He didn't have an easy life. He had a daughter who had some serious um, health problems. He had a stepmom who blew up. She was working on like the stove and there was a fire. There was an accident and she just gets covered in hot grease and fire. And he threw water on her, which just made the grease fire even more. And it just killed her. So he had to watch that. And then he came where there was this school council in the area. This is a small town. So this is in the town of this is Bath township and it was this small area and he was just he he was one of those guys that was kind of luckless and then he'd get a break and then things would kind of fall apart for him i don't feel sympathetic for this guy because he's a total scumbag but yeah and so just so you don't feel too sympathetic for him he was super impatient one day a neighbor's dog walked onto his property and it was barking so he shot it another time he beat a horse to death so again like this guy is pretty scummy He would run for local elections. Sometimes he'd win. He ran for, so he was put in the position of temporary town clerk. And then he ran to take the position over for full. And he lost. And he became despondent. And he stopped working his farm. And his neighbor was like, I've seen that before. I've seen people stop working their farm. And generally means they're going to kill themselves because the farm is your life. If you're not working your farm, if you're not preparing it for the next season, you're not planning on having a next season. That's his buildup. So now we're in 1927. And on May 18th, his house blows up. And Andrew's sitting there in his car. He's getting everything ready to go somewhere as rescuers are showing up and they're kind of putting the fire out and stuff like that. And Andrew turns to the rescuers and he says, Boys, you're my friends. You better get out of here. You better head down to the school. And drives away. As the rescuers are kind of like, what the hell? And they're putting out, still putting out fire. They hear a second, bigger explosion at the school. Now, Bath Consolidated School was an elementary school. And what Andrew Kehoe had done Over the course of months, he had been purchasing dynamite. He was putting some on his house and putting hundreds of pounds in the vents at the school. They had a timer set to go off at 845. The north side of the school just is vaporized. The the ceiling just collapses. The kids who don't get incinerated in the blast get crushed by the debris. People said that, you know, people just begin rushing out of their houses. The people at the farm who were putting out that fire, they immediately got all their gear back on their trucks, started headed to the school. People just begin removing rubble. Teachers are saying, you know, I was just seeing bits and pieces of kids. The one teacher who survived the explosion, she said she just saw people, kids flying across the room. Like they had been catapulted. Just unimaginable horror. And she, the first thing she was like in shock from the noise. And then she sees this horrific stuff. People start pouring out of their houses. They don't know what's going on. They begin removing debris. One account said that they saw women pick up pieces of debris that would take 10 men to move. And you just had, you know, people were moving debris. People were looking for their children. They were just hoping under each piece they would find somebody alive. Andrew Kehoe pulls up outside of the school. And he's sitting there in his truck, kind of slumped over. And the school superintendent walks over to the truck to, you know, he thinks that Andrew had been injured as well because he's just kind of slumped over. So the superintendent, another local and a young boy who had survived the blast of the school, he kind of wanders over by the truck as well. The superintendent looks on the truck and he sees Andrew has a rifle. And there's a brief struggle over the rifle. And then the truck explodes. 
Andrew shot some more explosives in the truck that he had filled with bits and pieces of metal. He created a giant car bomb, an entire, you know, a giant IED that just shot out shrapnel. Killed himself, killed the superintendent, the farmer, killed the young eight-year-old boy who was just standing there. So a, a witness of the scene say, saw that this gets gross so i don't mind if you guys turn it off but or this gets dire i guess i should say that he goes there he goes this one witness said i saw a mother sitting there this one here so this one witness this was his account i saw one mother mrs eugene hart sitting on the bank a short distance from the school with a little dead girl on each side of her and holding a little boy percy who died a short time after they got him to the hospital this was about the time Kehoe blew his car up in the street, severely wounding Perry, the oldest child of Mr. and Mrs. Hart. So she's sitting there holding her son, who's dying. Her older son is next to her, and he just gets shredded by this debris. In total, his wife died, Andrew died, and then 44 other people died in that explosion. Now, the north side of the school blew up. As investigators were going through the area and people were removing rubble, they found 500 additional pounds of dynamite on the south side of the school, wired to a clock set to go off at 845. What they think was the first explosion sent shockwaves and disabled the other trigger sparing all the kids on the south side. I mean, obviously, there's debris flying around and there are injuries, but I think over 70 people got injured or something like that. I mean, obviously, you know, they were injured by debris. There was a total of 58 non-fatal injuries that day. And he was just mad insane. That's, that's on record as being the worst school massacre in American history. When we talk about school shootings, which are equally tragic, and you see numbers like 13 or 24 or things like that, None of them have even come close to comparing to the Bath School Massacre. And hopefully none of them ever will. Hopefully none of them ever will. It's just been lost to history. It was this massive news story back then, obviously. It was coast-to-coast news. It's actually worldwide news. They covered it. I think it's fascinating because these huge life-changing events, these huge events that ripple throughout the globe, just become lost as time goes on. So yeah, that's the story of the Bath School Massacre. It's chilling. It's just chilling to think that he planned this out and actually took steps. Like, he planned it out for months, and then he, like, prepared it for months. He was hiding dynamite in there, and the whole time, he wasn't having second thoughts. He was totally going to do this to punish the town that he felt slighted him in the election. They figured the election was the ultimate trigger, him losing that election. Nuts. Nutty stuff, people. Nutty, there's crazy people in the world, and it's up to good people to stop bad people. That's just kind of the mission, really. That's Our mission is to reach out to these people who are being sucked into the darkness and say you're not alone. That might sound pat, but it can help. It really can help. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.